Alrighty, ladies, welcome to our phylogenetic tree note video. So the first thing I want to do is just go ahead and do a couple of definitions. So phylogenetics is a method of classifying organisms by the characteristics that they have in common and showing evolutionary relationships over time. Now, evolution is technically unit four, but we're kind of starting to lead into that. So phylogenetic trees help us to see these evolutionary relationships between organisms. So I'm going to show you typically what a phylogenetic tree looks like, and there's a lot on this slide. So the first thing are these um, what we call branches. So each one of these branches is leading us to a different species. So at the top we have species A, B, C, D, and E. These are all different species, okay? They have characteristics that are unique to only them. But they all share some type of history with a common ancestor, B, C, D, and E share some type of history with letter A. So it's a way for us to see relationships, to see how things have evolved into new species. So the first group I want to talk about is what we call an outgroup. So this is the least co closely related species. It normally separates off the tree first. It's the first branch off of our common ancestor. Then over here we have some derived characters. These are characteristics or traits that separate different species. They're also called nodes. So if you see that word, that means it's a derived characteristic or trait that um, evolved or that came to be during this time. Um, speaking of time, if you look over here, this arrow, so the lower you are on the phylogenetic tree, the more past it is. So the, the longer ago that this was around. And up here are the most recent species. So E would be our most recent species to develop. Um, speciation is essentially, oops, just the formation of a new species. So each one of these speciation occurred, right? A new species branched off. Now, these nodes, I'm going to show you some examples, but these nodes are the most, probably one of the most important things that you can understand about phylogenetic trees because let's say that this node is um, fur. So that means that at this point in our phylogenetic tree, fur developed, which means that letter A does not have fur, but letter B has fur. Okay, so I kind of like to think of it as like a highway and these nodes are exits. And if you have that node, then you can get off the exit. If you do not have that node, then you are kind of blocked and you have to go to this branch. Does that make sense? I don't know. We're going to practice a little bit, but I like to think of it as a highway and just think of this as kind of a exit. If you can get off, you can go. That means you have the trait. If you do not have the trait, you cannot pass that node and you have to go up here. So there can be multiple nodes on a phylogenetic tree. Sometimes you'll see nodes on the actual branch up here. Um, it just really depends on what we're looking at. But let's go ahead and see. There's a couple of different ways that phylogenetic trees can look. So this is kind of the example you just saw. This is another way that we can draw phylogenetic trees. So we have the common ancestor at the base. We have the outgroup, which is the least closely related um, species to the other ones. It's usually the most past, the, the most not recent <laughs> species to have developed. So they're, they're usually the oldest. Maybe that's the best way to say it. 
And then we have our most closely related species, which tend to be at the top or kind of over here. They have the most traits in common. So this one might have, in our previous example, um, it would have had maybe two traits in common, maybe here and here. This one might have had maybe one, two, three, however many it might have had. These two have the most in common because they've kind of followed the same um, path the entire time. So here's a little bit of an example to kind of put names to these letters and these words. So down here, we would have our common ancestor. Normally, there's nothing down at the bottom of a phylogenetic tree. We just know that that's where the common ancestor goes. Our hagfish would be our outgroup because it is most closely related to our ancestor, our common ancestor, and least closely related to everything else. So if we're going down our highway, we hit this exit. Um, hagfish do not have jaws, so they can't exit. That's why they're here. However, perch do have jaws, so they can go ahead and go right through. But perch don't have lungs, so they can't exit. So they belong right here on our phylogenetic tree. If we wanted to go to salamanders, salamanders have jaws and lungs, but they don't have claws and nails, which is why they are right here. And so on and so forth. Like I said a little bit ago, we can have nodes on the actual branches and that just kind of means that feathers didn't fit on our big branch down here. So we kind of made a little subcategory. That's the best way that I can describe it. Pigeons don't have fur, so it can't be that. So we go ahead and put that trait up here so that we know only pigeons have that trait. So as we keep going, let's say we want to talk about our lizards. So we'll go down our highway. We have jaws, lungs, claws, or nails. And lizards do not have fur. So they that's why they're right here. Okay. If we go up to our chimp, our chimp has all of these traits, which is why it is all the way up here. It's also the most recent to become a species compared to these other ones. Now, if I were to ask you which two organisms are the most closely related, I would hope that you would say mouse and chimp because they have all of these traits in common. So these two are the most closely related because they have all of this in common. Okay, so next thing is phyletic groups. Um, this is kind of just... I'm never going to ask you questions about this. I just want you to be aware that this is something that we do have when we're talking about phylogenetic trees. But a phyletic group is a group that includes the common ancestor and all of the descendants, living or extinct, of that ancestor. So the main way that I think about this is typically we'll have a trait. You see these little nodes. If the section that we're talking about, so up here, if these two things have the same node, so they, they kind of share, they share this trait, and they have a connection to the common ancestor, that would be a phyletic group. If we were to circle this entire thing, both of these, but the node is up here, that's not a phyletic group anymore because they don't share all of the same traits, right? This node's right here, this guy does not have that trait, so that would not be a phyletic group. Looking on this side of the phylogenetic tree, again, these all have this shared um, derived characteristic or node, and they are connected to our common ancestor. So this would be a phyletic group. This is a little bit confusing. I'm going to link a few videos to hopefully help you with this in our Unit 2 page on Canvas. Um, if you haven't checked that out, there's a bunch of videos already for phylogenetic trees. But I, like I said, we're going to practice a little bit, and I'll make more videos if you need it. So that concludes 
Unit 2 notes. Like I said, there will be videos available for you for help. You can also always come and find me and I can do my best to explain it in a way that makes sense for you.